Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on IP addresses. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, this video is going to be focused on IP addresses. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh, two types of ways to configure your IP address. So the first way we're going to show you is a static IP, and then the second way we're going to show you is DHCP. Let's hop in. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to configure the IP address on your server. Setting the IP address on your server is necessary for giving the server internet access. And like previously mentioned by Scott, we are going to do this in two different ways. The first way is setting a static IP address, and then the second way we're going to set a IP address via DHCP. So what does all of this mean? First of all, a static IP address is one that is manually set by the user. The user is going to manually set the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS server. They're going to have to manually put in all of those numbers. So it's not necessarily the easiest thing, and we'll kind of go over the, the easier alternative uh, when we go over DHCP. But like I said, the user is going to have to do all of these things. They're going to have to manually type in all of this information. And, you know, another thing with uh, static IP addresses is, is that if a user types in an IP address on another device that's the, exactly the same, there's going to be a conflict because there can only be one unique IP address for each device in the network. That you can't have duplicate IP addresses. So there's nothing really managing that when you have static IP addresses. So from that sense, it can be a little bit harder to manage but you do have that control over your IP addresses. You have that flexibility and you, 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 can, you have that customization. For DHCP, on the other hand, which stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, this is an IP address that is dynamically set whenever the device connects to a network. So as you can tell, that's already a lot easier compared to a static IP address because the device just connects to the network and it's dynamically set. Whenever the device connects to the network, the DHCP server in the network is typically going to be service built into the router, especially for Soho routers. And that DHCP server is going to assign the IP address and it's going to reserve that IP address for the device. One of the great things about DHCP is that it's automatically going to know which IP addresses are already in use, so it's not going to assign duplicate IP addresses. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. And like I said, first I'm going to show you how to set a static IP address. And then once we do that, I will show you how to set a DHCP IP address. Let's get going. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server. On post, you want to go ahead and press F10. And this will bring you into the lifecycle controller. You might have this initial setup wizard. So if you want to, you can go ahead and fill this out. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do that another time, and we'll configure it later. You want to go all the way down to Settings, and then you want to navigate to Network Settings. And here you can pick the designated uh, NIC port that you want to use. We're going to use port 1. Now we want to scroll down underneath IPv4 Network Settings, and where it says IP Address Source, we want to go ahead and select Static IP. So this part, it gets a little bit more complicated because the numbers that you're going to put in here are going to be different based on your network settings. So this IP address, it's going to be a number that has four octets. And those first three octets of the number, that's pretty much going to represent your network. And then that last octet, that's going to be an identifying number for the device of the network. So what you need to go ahead and do is figure out what the first three octets are and in your network. So one, you can either do this by getting in contact with your network administrator. They'd be able to give you all the information that you need. But let's say you don't have a network administrator. Maybe you're using this for home use. What you want to do is hop onto a laptop or desktop that's already connected to the network. You want to open up the, the command line. And for a Windows system, you want to type in ipconfig. If you have a Linux or a Mac, you want to do the if config command. Once you run this command, you will be able to view that device's IP address. So what you can do now is type in those first three octets into the IP address on your server. And then that last number, it can be whatever you want it to be as long as it's under 255. 
And then you want to make sure that that number is also not taken up by another device in the network. Now, if you run the ipconfig command again on that computer or laptop, you can figure out what the subnet mask is. So in our case, it's 255, 255, 255, 0, and that's what it's going to be for most networks. As well as the default gateway, this is going to be the IP address of the router in the network. You can still find that with the IP config command, uh, but generally the last octet of the default gateway is going to have a 1 at the end. But just to be sure, run that IP config command and that will show you what the default gateway in your network is. Now for the DNS address, this may be different depending on the network. Your network may have its own or like an in-house DNS server. So you can use the IP address for that server if you would like. But we're gonna go ahead and just use Google's primary DNS server address, which is gonna be 8888. Once we have inputted all of that information, we can click on finish and then it'll save our changes and then we can press OK. And there we have it, we have set a static IP address. Now we're gonna show you how to set your IP address via DHCP. So setting your IP address via DHCP is gonna be a very similar set of steps that we use to set the static IP, but in my opinion, it's, it's a lot easier. You wanna go back to lifecycle controller by pressing F10 on the boot menu. Once you're in lifecycle controller, you wanna scroll down to settings. And in settings, we wanna go down to network settings. And it brings us to that same menu that we we're in before. So if we want to, we can change our NIC port. But the only difference is, is whenever we go to IP address source, we're going to select DHCP instead of static IP. And that's, that's it. Very simple. That's all we have to do. We select that and whenever we do finish like that, the DHPC server in the network is going to assign our server an IP address. It's very hands off, very easy. All of the hard work is done for us. And in most cases, going DHCP is the way to go. So that wraps it up. That is how you set a static IP and an IP via DHCP. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you found this video useful, go ahead, leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, we have plenty in stock. So go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Have a great day.